Um, and met Sam uh, a few weeks ago in front of the house, uh, sledding. And he, he's, uh, you know, he is cute. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Um, he's damn cute. And he's a hopeful little creature. Okay? He wakes up in the morning. He comes over to our room and he goes, what are we doing today? I'm like, I don't know, buddy. I'm still sleeping. Well, I have some ideas. <laughs> and that morning, he decided, we're going sledding. I said, buddy, I don't want to go to the park. He goes, well, how about the hill in front of our house? I, never, I mean, we have a slope. You can see there's a slight slope. I'm like, okay. And then he realized there was ice under the snow on the driveway, and that's where we did the sledding. Okay? But very hopeful guy, wakes up in the morning, has you know, not sure about where he's headed, then he kind of zones in and, and fixes in on a goal, and then he says, I'm going to do that. And I'm like, as long as you put your coat, hat, and gloves on, go do whatever you want. So that morning, he went sledding, then I went sledding, my wife went sledding, his grandparents went sledding, all in the front yard. We had a great time, and it was initiated by this little guy. Very hopeful creature. Now, he has a very good life. I love the video you shared yesterday. I mean. If you ask Parrish what's he, what he wants to do when he grows up, sledding, <laughs> basketball, you know, the stuff I do now, this is, it won't get any better than this. And I think this picture, this next picture tells the story. It doesn't get much better than this, okay? <laughs> there he is with his little posse. <laughs> that's Kate, that's Abby, and that's Ashton. Um, otherwise known as Kate Bobe Bobates, Abby Cadabby, and Ashton Bobashton. <laughs> Where was this picture taken? At his school. He goes to the only strength based preschool in the world at Gallup. So I drive him to work in the morning and I drop him off at a strength based preschool where every day they get meaningful praise and recognition, every day they get attention to what they do best, every day they have a whole lot of fun, and every day they complete projects. Every day. But I don't, you know, I think he's doing okay. <laughs> I think he's doing okay. And when I said it doesn't get any better than this, some data we have show it doesn't get any better than this. Okay. It will stay at this level until we're in about fifth grade, and then our engagement and well-being will drop until we're in 12th grade. And then you say hello to folks who have been on a precipitous decline for the last seven years. Okay? So when I think about the happiest place on earth, he's there. In fact, when he asked about Disney, I said, dude, we took you there last year, don't you remember? And I'll show him some, rat, some mouse ears and stuff. He goes, oh yeah. I was two, I don't remember. So that's my story. We didn't really take him. I'm just telling you. <laughs> and it saved me tons of money. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know when we went to Disney, and I'm like, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so for those of you thinking about having kids. Um, so it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> when I talk to him about his future, what does he want to be? He does want to slay. And he'll, he'll, he's very good about prioritizing. He goes, basketball player, football player, baseball player, volleyball player. No, make that volleyball player third. Yeah, that's it. And then I said, well, what else do you want to be? And he'll say, I want to be a rock star. And so while I'm away, as in yesterday, um, he got a faux hawk. Um, because he thinks that's cool. It's a rocker shag. So that's his little haircut lady um, cat. Um, so there, that's my latest picture of him. So his life will not, this is sad to say, get much better than it is today. Okay? He'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and hopefully he'll get back to where he is today. And I struggle with that. I struggle with that a lot because he's, you know, I want him. We've asked a thousand moms, what do you want for your kids? And what's number one? Happy. Happy. I want him to be happy. I want him to be happy. 
I struggle with this so much. So my job now is to make sure he doesn't deviate too much from where he is right now. Or in other words, I hope I don't screw him up. And I hope K-12 doesn't screw him up. And I hope college doesn't screw him up. And I hope his job doesn't screw him up. Now, I do want to go back to one thing. When he talks about the future, and he goes to school, and he's been on 20 different college campuses, he knows all about education as much as a three and a half year old can know. When I say, what do you want to do when you grow up? He never says, be a college graduate. Okay? And when you ask people, what do you want to do when you grow up? Rarely do you hear, I want to be a college graduate. Okay? What do you want to do? What's your big goal in life? Most people jump over that, and they focus on the what? The job. So either by culture or by how we, our brain works, people jump over us and focus on the job, and I want to come back to that. But isn't that assumed? You know, when I talk to students, many students that I have say, college is just grade 13. It's assumed. Yeah. You, know, you go from 8 to 9, you go from 12 to 13. Right. It, and I'll buy that. Um, Phyllis has a good point, isn't that assumed? Um, but when we think about how goals work and how goals affect our thinking, we target resources to the goals that drive us. Okay? And if the goal that drives us is getting a good job one day, so I can have wealth, happiness, security, health care, family, and that's the goal that's really we're focusing on, then the assumption becomes kind of a, a thought that we don't, we may not target enough resources toward, okay? And we've heard this from Bill Gates, you know, if we link more relevance to what we're doing in high school and college, and kids might get a little more excited about what they're doing and then get to their, in their goal box a little better. Let me talk about engagement for a little bit. Um, I met with these 10 college students, they're in this student success course. Um, I was invited over. Um, to visit with them to talk about strengths. They had taken strengths quests. I was going to talk to them about their strengths. I've done this dozens of times before. I walk into the building. Well, I walk into the building, but to be honest, I was a little hungry. Okay, it was about, I think it was a noon class. So I was walking to the building. I'm like, oh, great. It's in this building, which has a little food court in it. Um, so after class, I'll get some food. Walk into the class, and I see these guys just, I mean, they were just demoralized. They just looked demoralized. They were tired. Um, you know, I heard some stomachs rumbling. Um, they were like, who's this bozo? You know, they, they weren't really happy to be there. They weren't really happy to see me. So my friend Shanda, who teaches the class, I went over to Shanda and I said, can I take these guys to lunch? She said, why? I said, can I take these guys to lunch? She says, yeah. I said, hey guys, let's go to lunch. We walked downstairs, said, get whatever you want. I bought them lunch. We sat down at a big old table, and we talked about their strengths. Okay, did what I would normally do in class, went over lunch. And they were kind of poking me, and he goes, you don't mind being seen with us? I'm like, no, I'm a professor, you're a student, this is what we do. He <laughs> said, but you're eating lunch with us in public. Like, yeah, <laughs> a lot of professors do that. Well, I've never had a professor do that. So we got under that, and I said, well, <coughs> tell me about your best friends on campus. Nine out of 10 didn't have best friends on campus. Okay? So strengths can make a difference because I can encourage them to do more of what they do best every day. But I can't necessarily make them friends, have best friends on campus. However, I mean, maybe we can think about ways to do that. But what I learned from that day is not the power of strengths, but the power of engagement. These students were not engaged. These one or two maybe were actively disengaged. The rest were not engaged. And they were not engaged because they didn't have people in their lives that made them feel like they mattered at school. They didn't